one. No props tonight. No props tonight. No coffee. No bits of paper. Travis has given me the, what do you call this? An iPad. Yes, I'm a bit of a dinosaur. And even then, I uh, had struggled to use it. Am I the only one who thought Walid was way off the mark in his acceptance speech? I would say yes, but we'll see what the panel have got to say. Second letter tonight, what happens uh, when you fall for your boss? Workplace relations. Now, prior to the advent of the uh, internet, I think it was one in seven relationships started at work. Now, <laughs> they've all gone to the internet. And the last letter tonight, most will choose not to go through with child rearing given the choice. What a wonderful time to be alive. Someone who doesn't have any maternal instincts. All these letters and more coming up in about 20 seconds. Oh, Travis, I'm not allowed to say that, am I? But it is about 20 seconds. You know, we can sneak it in every now and then. See you soon. Don't go away. All the panellists are coming up right now. And me. <laughs> Got a problem, big or small, would a miracle be nice? Our monthly crew is back, churning out advice. You might even laugh a bit in the following your backside on the couch cause baby it's time for sweet and sour right here on sweet and sour good evening everyone lovely to have your company welcome to sweet and sour gary mitchell with you and a terrific lineup of guests first up all the way from canada hello pat thanks for having me <laughs> nice to have you here sir now you've got to tell us what brings you to our shores? Well, a uh, career change uh, was in order, so uh, Australia ranks uh, amongst the top uh, three countries in the world to live in, uh, albeit Canada is a fantastic place. Uh, where, does to Canada, get a where does Canada rank in all of that? I think Canada is in the top five, but uh, if you want to swim, if you want to cycle uh, and, and, uh, and get outside and have, uh, say, uh, uh, eight months of summer instead of uh, eight months of winter, this is the place to be. So. This is the place to be. Yeah. Now, You've also been a dolphin trainer. I have, yes. Yeah. Wow. And, and my life no longer has a porpoise. I, I can say that <laughs> uh, with, with all honesty. Boom, yeah. boom. Yeah. Terrific. We'll chat to you a little bit more. Welcome to the show. Nice to have you here. And Stace. Gary. How's the real estate market? Good. Oh, I bet you say that to everybody. I think it's picking up. <laughs> Is it? I think so. Oh, that's nice to hear. We've been busy, so that's good. Oh, okay, but you're in rentals, right? Yes, but our sales side has been busy also. Really? Yes. Is that because everything's really at a base low position and Oh, well, we've still got are... things selling, so I think I don't think things are going to get any worse. I think we're probably turning the corner now. Oh, I hope you're right. Gosh, because things are really cheap at the moment, aren't they? They have been very cheap. Well, not Melbourne. Melbourne they're still going. It's a Sydney, good opportunity going... to get into the market and stay in the market. I can't see it going any lower. So. Yeah, agreed. And I spoke to some mates last week who said you've got to buy. You've got to buy now. You've got to you buy do. everything that you can buy right now. Exactly. It's, not getting it's any once in a lifetime chance. From the expert. How's the dancing? It's been, well, winter's a little bit quiet. But How do you dance in winter? Well, we do, but it's just, you know, you got to get out of bed and you got to, like, You don't like or... dancing in winter? <laughs> no. Okay. No, I've just been busy working. What do you do to keep fit if you're not going to be dancing? I have been doing a 28-day challenge body transformation. So I'm into week two and um, I'm loving the exercise, so that keeps me warm, so training five times a week. But the food... I realised how addicted I was to, to um, sugar and carbs. Mm. Isn't everyone? No, I, I'm no. I've been so unhappy the last two weeks. Oh, because you're off sugar and carbs. <laughs> oh, I don't. Yeah. Do you know sugar and carbs? Mm. Do you do sugar and carbs? In fact, I've um, been on a, a weight training regime too for a couple of months. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Look at the carbs. Wow. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but you know, not for any healthy reasons like yours. That vanity. I, I wanted to be able to wear these shirts again. Because, you know, I've got a whole wardrobe, Gary, of clothes I can't fit you into. You look terrific tonight, am oh, I? Right? You are well. awesome. Um, you are the most charming man on radio, by the way, too. I've listened uh, according to you. to who? Uh, uh, me and uh, a lot of people who I know that listen to you. You take so many callers who are terrific, and you also get those pesty ones, and you, you, you tolerate it, and you... There are no pesty people. We're all family. You're a gentleman, sir. You've family. always We're been a gentleman. We're all family. Everyone's got a beautiful heart. You know, 
we need more of that sort of attitude in this that's, world. That's right. And less Love. of Donald Trump's. That's <laughs> welcome, Johnny. Good you're to have you back here. We haven't been on the panel together for years. Yeah, it's been a long time. But you've been on the show with Max K. Right? Yes, that, that <laughs> He's was, more fun than I am. That was wild. <laughs> You'll want Max again after this episode. Here we go. First one titled Mustafa Rethink. Hello, panellists. I love TV and I figure I'm, the, I'm one of the few in my age group, I'm now 32, who votes every year for the TV Week Logie Awards. I love Gogglebox, so do I. I only discovered it recently, but so do I. And I love Waleed Ali. And I, I've got to tell you as well, uh, the letter writer actually spelt Waleed wrong. Mm. And he goes on to say that he's a big fan of Waleed um, and all that sort of thing, but he spelt his name wrong. But anyway, never mind. Um, I love Waleed Ali and I'm delighted that they won for their categories. I just didn't get the racist stuff that he was going on about in his acceptance speech. Uh, which was way out of bounds for my liking. I voted for Waleed because he's smart, funny and thoroughly entertaining on the project. I didn't give him my vote because I was in sympathy with his... Ex uh, I didn't give him my vote because I was in sympathy with his acceptance speech statements of, dis of discrim discriminated upon black people or Muslims, yet that sentiment seemed to be the one that was celebrated. The mouth will start working in a moment, folks. He also said a colleague whose real name is Mustafa would not land a job in TV if he used that name when applying for his TV jobs. The funny thing is, Waleed didn't change his name or his appearance to win this Logie, simply because his, ex his success had nothing to do with any of that. Am I the only one who thought Waleed was way off the mark in his acceptance speech? Was he simply speaking out of his own historic insecurities? By the way, I loved Noni Hazelhurst's speech and it comes to us from Mark of Box Hill in Victoria and we're going to Jono first. Did you see his speech at all, Jono? I caught a recording of it, I didn't watch it at the time. But yeah, I mean, it's a popularity contest. So, you, you know, he won that for being popular and he's the first, and we love firsts. Anything that's the first, uh, no need second, but, but you know, second's good as well. Um, I, I thought it was a really good point about the name, though, uh, because uh, Waleed Ali is, is not a name that we're used to hearing on TV a lot, uh, and he did perfectly fine with that great name. Yeah. So uh, it left me scratching my head a bit, uh, but I do like watching him on the telly. Good on you. Anita, did you see it? I didn't, I didn't actually see the speech on the Logies. I was right at the end, I was in bed by then. But um, Have you seen its content at all anyway? Yeah, I, I have, bits and pieces. And I think look, he's, he is smart, he's funny, and he's thoroughly entertaining, and I think that's what it was. He, when he speaks, um, people listen, and I think that's <laughs> it's a popularity yeah. contest. It, would, where, it is, it's look, all those I, sort I, of look, things. I think the speech was quite, from what I heard of it, it was quite humble. Um, there's he's just picking on the very end bit he went on i think it was like 15 minutes long all up mm. where he speech. congratulated his um his wife he actually um yeah. said something really beautiful said about his wife about the other people he works with as well so i think it's probably been taken out of context a little bit um i think he misunderstood uh, maybe yeah I, I think it's just the fact that people are very quick to judge um especially in this industry where if they don't know um, or they're knowledgeable about the situation of what's going on and well people can judge very quickly and I think that's what he was getting at was thank mm. you that I'm here because of, of even he even said it's not because of me personally he said I think it's just because of the whole all right situation. terrific did you see it I didn't see it but I heard about it and, and? I think I think he's just a funny entertaining guy and it was terrific he's great it was terrific and he, and he did it in a celebratory mode and I, I think the letter writer may be missing the point because you know uh, we've got to this point in Australia where you know we can celebrate diversity and there he was just making a line in the sand to say look what you vote for as well you know here we are now isn't that fantastic we're a multicultural society we so are. that's why mind you if Gary Mitchell had a name like Kiriako Hunting Mikhail Wow. <laughs> I wonder how far he'd get. Well, obviously now, you know, it wouldn't make a difference, which exactly. is nice. Which is nice. Nice to hear. And maybe his mate Mustafa started at an earlier time where we've literally bridged across from. So, Pat, last word. Hey, I agree uh, with, with you, Gary. I think uh, this is a, a great melting pot uh, of, a, of a nation, and and I, you know, I feel for Walid's plight. Uh, in, in Canada, many of the same issues exist. 
Um, the fact that he's Egyptian and Muslim is incidental, not, not incidental. remarkable. Um, and, and in fact, the more interesting speech uh, was followed uh, with, with Noni Hazelhurst. She said that, uh, look, the, the industry is, is, uh, is dominated by men. And in fact, she's the only, uh, I think the second woman to receive the award she, re she received. So yeah. it's a reflection uh, of the prevailing guard in the industry. And I think, uh, um, I think there's, there's time for change. And, and I think uh, it's unfortunate, but uh, I, I, um, I concur with R Roxanne Moore, who uh, from Am Amnesty International says, we need to have uh, more honest and uncomfortable uh, communication with each other here in Australia to uh, um, to discuss what racism is and 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 uh, how to we're deal getting, with. We're with, getting. There. I think we are. Have yeah. you ever had a relationship with your boss? Not yet. But the day is young. Because <laughs> when we come back, we're talking about having a relationship with your boss. Whether you do that now, or whether it's still out of bounds. Don't go away. More of Sweet and Sour. See you soon. Who has? Getting in touch with Sweet and Sour is easy. Just head to sweetandsour.net.au to send us a letter. And while you're there, why not check out our past episodes? Plus, don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And for a behind-the-scenes look at Sweet and Sour, check us out on Instagram. And for every letter writer, we're going to send you to the movies. Still not working. Go to see of Natalie Cameron and NRC Communications. And the movie we're sending you to this week, there it is up on the screen, is Marguerite. Has anybody seen it yet? No. Oh, don't rush. <laughs> Want to be boss, dear Mitch and panel. John said, I bet you it's good. Yeah. Thank you, Jono. It's tough. We got a snag from someone. That's good. <laughs> What's the deal with workplace relationships right now? I hear the old adage, don't screw the crew, and figure. Uh, that applies as a moral code only for the bosses to avoid sexually harassing their employees. Well, does it? Well, what happens if it's the other way around and you just happen to fall for your boss? I'm in the finance industry and in the last year, as the economy has turned down, we haven't been as frantic and the extra time has meant we've been able to spend more time chatting, relaxing and getting to know one another. So it turns out my boss is a beautiful human being and I've fallen for her. We went for coffee last week and something came over me and I just kissed her. Ooh. Well, she kissed me back. And I had all the lightning and fireworks that only true, true love's kiss can deliver. She immediately said to me that we must remain totally professional in the office. But since then, nothing has happened. It hasn't been awkward or anything, nor has the work relationship suffered, but I don't know what to do next or whether I should do anything at all. Please, panel people, what do I do next? I've fallen for my boss. Is it still a consideration for women that they'd prefer their men to earn more than them? And might this mean that any relationship with my boss is doomed? Les of Prospect in South Australia. And for anyone who's out there, you might want to Twitter us or hop on social media as well because now you can join the conversation here at Sweet and Sour as well and we're going first up to Pat on this one sir. Well uh, yes Les uh, from the biggest romantic currently in the southern hem hemisphere I, I would have to say. Uh, <laughs> Self praise is no recommendation my mum pre says. Pre-order your wheelchair because uh, this is a minefield and, and I wouldn't touch this uh, I think there's a place and a time for, for romance work is not one of them I think uh, uh, the, the, the staff will have their way with, with him and, and this will land on a bad note. Um, I if think, they know I th about I, it. I, I think it's <laughs> never a good idea. I think, uh, I think love is a great thing, but uh, love and work need to be separated. And I think ultimately, I haven't seen a successful relationship that's, that's been launched at work. Uh, usually it ends with uh, one person having to leave the, the place of yes, work. But, but perhaps right. we have some other stories. Here. Stace. What do you do if it's your true love and it's your boss and it does, it's not allowed to interfere with the work? Well, I think I'd have to agree with Pat there because when she did the old uh, things have to remain totally professional in and the office. And they have. They have. Oh, they and have, he said they that. Have, and but he's, he's sitting there going, I want more. I know. And then nothing's happened since. That sounds like the big brush off to me. So, <laughs> well, it does. It does sound like the big brush off to but me. But you don't know, do you? You haven't well, done anything. You haven't no, been you proactive. Haven't, but she's Outside the, of work. She's but told she's, you what to do. She's the boss. And he's like the lovesick puppy. So what he could do if he really has to is contact her outside of work and Please. see what she says. But I have a feeling it's going to end badly. Ah, prophet of doom, Anita. Are you the prophet of doom on this one as well? 
No, look, I, yeah, well, I think he needs <laughs> yeah. to. Yeah, well, <laughs> sorry, mate. <laughs> yeah, just Thanks for writing this week, Sal. We're just going to show up. Just to. ask her <laughs> out. You're both adults. If she says no, she says no. Uh, yeah. Bottom line. What do you got to on. lose? Um, look, she's the boss, though, so if she really wants you, she can have you. Hmm. But um, at least make the first move. Be the man. In what the about this point? Because you sound like... Do women, do still, women still want men to earn more than them? Or? No, not necessarily. No, I, I think, think so either. Things have changed these days. And I, I think want my you, woman to earn more than me. It's more, about, it's more, <laughs> yeah. more about respect and uh, loyalty and trust these days. Jono, come on in. Well, I, I think in this relationship you have to work out who's the boss. And I think that's already been established. I, I think one of the main issues here is kissing on the first date. Coffee and a kiss. Well, what's with that? Like, eager. And uh, if you're worried about being paid less, ask for a pay rise. <laughs> From the boss. Good luck. <laughs> ask him for your job. <laughs> All right, when we come back, we're talking about whether it's normal that lots of people don't want kids nowadays. Don't go away, more of Sweetens Out. See you soon. Stay. Is it normal? Stay. In this day and age, it's few and far between as a television show which has depth, honesty, integrity. This is not one of those shows. Hello. Hello. That's all. You were waiting for the funny bit, weren't you? Sorry about that. Time for Sweet and Sour. Right here on Sweet and Sour. <laughs> all right, here we go with the last letter of the evening entitled Me, Me, Me. Dear panel, it's about time we as a society have come to understand that it's very normal for women and men not to want children. I've got a strange feeling of deja vu. Is anybody else <laughs> experiencing that? Prior to the advent of the pill in the early 1960s, we didn't have any really effective means of contraception. So as careful as everyone was, sex usually resulted in pregnancy. As the methods of contraception improved, the number of kids that women chose to have declined. We're now at that point where we can completely close off the tap and given the choice, most will choose not to go through with child rearing. Don't know whether we agree with that. What a wonderful time to be alive. And given that the greatest contribution that we can make to the planet is to reduce our carbon footprint by not having kids, this is the way of the future too. The reason for my email, however, is to support this wonderful notion of, get this, me Maternity. If women who have babies are given paid maternity leave and husbands are also now receiving paternity leave, it stands to reason that those who choose to do the right thing by the planet and not have babies should also be encouraged and rewarded with the equivalent leave entitlements called me maternity. In this day and age of equality, Surely this is a must, so says Andrea of Girraween in WA. Let's find out if Anita says this is the case as well. Do you want kids? Yes, eventually one day. So would you be giving uh, an allowance to people who don't have kids? No. <laughs> no, not at all. Why not? Well, because They're doing when the you right thing by the planet, so Andrea says. No, <laughs> children do not increase our carbon footprint, unfortunately. I think, look, when you have children, you, um, whether you're a single parent or not, you need to take time away from, from work in order to bring up a child. Therefore, you need those benefits um, from the government and that money in order to... Um, bring up children. Yeah, they're trying they to take encourage time. you to have kids. Now, if you want do not want, want children, kids. then you have more time to work and, and chase a career that you love, which means you are more better off in getting a, um, a pay rise or a better career than somebody mm. who this, has children. This smacks to me of so the you, age of entitlement. It's just selfish. They're getting it, I want it too. Yeah. What are you doing for Australia? Me, eternity, me, it's, like, it's just a selfish thing. I rant. don't think so. Who's going to pay for it? Andrew? What happens if you don't have a kid? And you get rewarded, and then the following year you go and have a kid. Exactly. Uh, cut it out. Well, how ridiculous. I read this article and thought, yeah, that's never going to get any support. And then someone writes in a letter. Oh, anyway. Mm. Jono, what's your view on this one? Uh, well, I'm with you, Gary. I mean, how much, how much money do you want? Do you want a one-child benefit? Do you want a two-child benefit? If you promise not to have five children, you get a five-child benefit? <laughs> <laughs> Where do you draw? I promise I Good won't point. have ten children. I want a ten-child benefit. <laughs> Rebate, but, yeah. but it's all about... I was planning on ten. I Give want ten. some too. You know, like, yeah, yeah. where do we get off with I want some too? Like, uh, Akron parking. I want to be able to park in the front. <laughs> Pram bays. I want to be able to park where they park. You know, I want some too. I think this person is uh, making a spectacle 
Oh, smarty. All right, puts his glasses on. All right, Pat. I'll take uh, stupidest things I've ever heard in my life for 500, Gary. <laughs> for 500. Uh, yeah, Jeopardy. Uh, Andrea, dr drugs are a wonderful thing. Uh, and, and hey, how can we argue with this? The, the good news out of this uh, is, is that. Uh, have you heard? Go There's on. actually global warming has ended, and and uh, they figure um, with lower solar activity by 2030, we're actually going to get colder. So, uh, you're in good hands. Gosh, I you hope have, so. You have, a, you have a Canuck on the panel. I can teach you how to stay warm, clothing alternatives, and the like. So, um, yeah, Andrea. Unfortunately, um, it's it's. Uh, it's, 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 it's not good news because because things will get colder, and uh, that's my story. I'm this will to never it. get through. In the same article, they were talking about people who were going to have pets come into the world, and they should get poor eternity. And oh, I get it. You, you know, you can if you let something like this in, you're gonna forget it. It's never gonna get in. Stace, do you like it? I think Andrew's making a few sweeping statements here, sweeping silly statements. Stupid! And, um, I mean, Have we got like so much money that we don't know what to do with and you're going to reward people for sitting back and doing nothing? Well, she just sounds like she's trying to scam time off work and Nick she'll be wanting a bonus for not taking her sick days, but they're there if you're sick, not if you... You don't get a bonus if you're not sick. They're there to take if you're sick, not for no reason. And maybe a better thing to think about might be, in my humble opinion, a tax break for every year you are a registered organ donor because that might encourage people to be an organ wow. donor for instance. Ooh, wow. Very Just clever. a little thing, something to you, think about because yeah. people if they're going to get a tax break. Proper incentives that give benefit incentive, to the rest of the community. Donor, Thank you. There's a good idea. Do you like this letter to give away the pair of limited edition Sunnies no. courtesy of Alon Treves and Aussie Opticals? No. 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 Which, which letter would you like to uh, award with the Sunnies? Um, Oh, number Nita likes two. number two. John's wearing his sunnies now. What, num what number do you want to be bossed? You want to be bossed? The, the, the guy has fallen in love. Yeah. Pat? Which letter two, all the way. You like letter yes. two as well? Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. Well, coming out to... Who is it? Let's have a look, let's have a look, let's have a look. Les of Prospect Les. in South Australia. He's fallen in love with his boss and he's going to get rejected. So, sadly, you can sit in the corner and wear your glasses so nobody knows that you're crying in the corner. Pat? You've been a dolphin trainer. I have. What else have you done? Well, uh, water treatment, engineering, uh, public speaking, bit of teaching. Um, what made you come all the way out here? Well, uh, initially it was uh, a case of uh, just uh, too much cold weather, believe it or not. Yeah. Uh, minus 45 when I left uh, Canada, plus 35 minus in Sydney. Minus 45. And I've uh, been loving yes. it ever since. So, yeah, I don't miss the, uh, what, what do we say, uh, two months of uh, Winter and bad, uh, eight months of bad tobogganing. So, yeah. It's, uh, it's not <laughs> How good are you tobogganing? Pretty good, actually, but uh, need to work on the surfing game now. So, okay, yeah. all right. That's why you've come here, to work mm. on the surfing. Good to have you on the show, mate. We've got to go. Thank you, sir. Stace. Next time you come on, you've got to maintain that position and tell me that real estate market is moving up again. I certainly hope it will be. What happens if we get rid of negative gearing? Well, I think that's a really bad idea. So do I. What do you want to take away from people? Because the government wants to take away from people that are trying to get ahead so we can give to the people that are doing nothing. It's the same old no, story. No, that's the argument, but you collapse everything. You don't, yeah. you don't look for ways to encourage and make it easier they for, don't. They just for the to, younger kids. They don't. They want to take away... You want to take away from all the people who've got investments. I don't, yeah. I don't swallow that. Same old, same old. Goodness me. Take from the haves and give to the have-nots, exactly. which... But, you know, there's argument for that, but I don't think no, changing already, our culture No, because they're already the biting at you with every tax they can get you anyway. Gosh. Anita, where are you dancing? Um, You're not. It's winter. She's already I'm told us that. She's baby. getting fit and she's on a 28-day challenge. I am. All right. So next time you'll well, see me, I'll right, be a new I'll, woman. I want to see what you're doing in 28 days, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, you'll all see. No, hang on. You're into, you've been doing it for how long? 10 days? Yeah. Okay, good luck. Jono! Hey! Terrific to have you, sir. It's been a pleasure. I've loved it. You guys are great. And we'll see you again soon. I want to be back. Thank all of our wonderful panellists. Thank our terrific crew. And thanks for having us at home. Good night, Australia. Good night, everyone. You've got to wave now. That's it. Pat knows. Pat will be the floor manager next week. Is that right? <laughs> Good night, everyone. Thanks for coming. <laughs> Bye-bye.